Now, the interesting thing to know about interest is interest is a byproduct of money in motion. Yes. So yes. when we think about even putting our money in the stock market, even though we're letting it sit there on our end, that money is still being utilized. That's how we are able to earn interest because that money is out working. Yes, it is. We thought compound interest was this mystical creature that only rich people had access to. Once you have it, then you don't have any control over the growth and you have to wait for it to accumulate over time. Oh yeah. My name is Darius. And I am Carmen. And in this video, we are going to teach you how to stack interest rates just like the banks so that you can earn compound interest for yourself. Now let's jump right into this video, right ladies and gentlemen, because this is jam packed with a amazing information. So first point, what is compound interest? <laughs> let's just talk about that for, for a second. What compound interest is, is let's say you have a principal amount of money and that principal is earning an, a certain amount of interest. Now we put compound interest into this process and you are earning interest on the principal and the accumulated interest all together. That's called compound interest, which is interest on top of interest. So anytime you are earning money, it's the accumulated amount that you are earning interest on. Whereas uh, typically you have a principal amount and you just earn interest and there's no accumulation that you're able to stack on top of that. So just want to make sure that we um, first and foremost clarify what compound interest is in the first place. Yeah. A good example of that would be a penny doubled every single day for the next 31 days. Do you know what that amount is? Yeah. Would you rather a hundred thousand dollars in cash or a penny doubled every day for the next 31 days? Mm. A lot of times. Mm. Ask that question one more time. I want to make sure that you guys heard him because that's a <laughs> That's a nugget. So would you rather have $100,000 in cash right now, or would you rather wait 31 days and have a penny doubled every single day for the next 31 days and you get that amount? Mm -hmm. I want B, option B. Right. And <laughs> a, a lot of people before thinking about it, they will say, I want $100,000, but a penny doubled every day. That's at 100% compound interest every single day for the next 31 days is over $10 million. Google it. We're right. <laughs> <laughs> now that happens because of as it relates to time yes. and the accumulation phase like Carmen was saying we're able to get 10 million dollars mm -hmm. now preface that nowhere in the world that we know of yet can you earn 100 percent compound interest and we can't but it, the banks can yeah the banks can <laughs> and if you find out y'all better holler at us on the comments when we figure this out <laughs> <laughs> so going back into compound interest, interest on top of interest, Darius just gave an amazing breakdown, a penny doubled every day for a month. 31 days is over $10 million. Mm -hmm. So when we learned that, we woke up and we said, wait a second, how can we get this mystical creature into our bank accounts <laughs> so that we can start doubling money just like the banks? Yeah. Now, one uh, more realistic way of looking at it is let's take uh, some type of investment. A lot of people like to invest in the stock market. Yes. Let's say we invest $500 a month in the stock market every single month for the next 30 years. Yes. At 5% interest, that is over four hundred and twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Now that's that's more realistic, right? When we yeah. think of it over a, a longer, longer period, period of time. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing: when it comes to investing our money in like the stock market or putting our money up in a CD or saving it in a bank, mm -hmm. we come to that portion. We come to that portion where we have to let the money sit. Yes, we have to let the money sit, and we have to wait for time. In order for it to accumulate. Yeah. Now, the most important thing about compound interest isn't the beginning phase. Well, all of it's important, but it's the end phase because when you have the interest on interest at the end of the period, that's yeah. when it really grows. Like in the uh, penny doubled every single day. Yeah. Yeah. Because really where compound interest starts to take off is remember, we're talking about the accumulated amount. The more money that you accumulate, that's the more interest you're earning. Mm -hmm. So like Daria said, compound interest gets really sweet towards the end of the accumulation phase because you have so much cash on hand. Yeah. Now, if we want to talk about taking control of the amount of interest that we're earning, we have to first think about the foundation. Where are we starting? Yes. Where are we actually putting our money? Mm -hmm. Now, Carmen and I, we really enjoy the product of dividend paying whole life insurance yep. because what we're able to do is we're able to use this as a savings vehicle and we're able to earn interest on the amount every single year for the rest of our life. 
And we're also able to utilize those funds while we still continue to earn interest. Yes. Now let's break that down a little bit because like Daria said, if you earn compound interest in the stock market, in a savings account or a CD, you have to take your money bag, haul it over to one of those vehicles and drop it. And mm -hmm. you can't touch it. So the main thing for us is when we realize is that we said, wow, if we're taking all this money to these vehicles and we can't touch this money for 30 years, that's no fun. <laughs> we mm -hmm. got to be able to make more money quickly. So in this case, when we found whole life insurance and the flexibility that it provides us, we said, wait a second, ding, ding, ding. This is where we need to put our money. So like Daria said, with whole life insurance, you pay your premium and you, you are able to have access to two things, a death benefit. And also let, let's call it like a savings uh, mm -hmm. vehicle, which is a cash value. That, that's typically what they call it as cash value. And every time we pay our premium, some money is going to go to the death benefit and some money is going to go to the cash. Now the cash is going to accumulate at a compounded rate, which is really awesome. And the best thing that we're able to do is leverage those funds to make money, to flip money, to stack interest rates. Mm -hmm. Now, how in the world can we do that is because the insurance company is going to look at the cash value and, and basically the death benefit of the policy and say, Hey, Darius and Carmen have $20,000 worth of cash in their policy. I can give you our 20,000, meaning the insurance company, they will lend us their 20,000, which allows our money to stay intact, earning interest. Yep. Now that is an amazing nugget to know about whole life because a lot of people just don't understand. You can get a loan from your policy, which still allows your money to grow and you can continue to flip the insurance company's money. I like it. Thank you. Really good. Yeah. Hope you catch that. <laughs> <laughs> hope you caught that. Now the interesting thing to know about interest is interest is a byproduct of money in motion. Yes. So yes. when we think about even putting our money in the stock market, even though we're letting it sit there, on our end, that money is still being utilized. That's how we are able to earn interest because that money is out working. Yes, it is. Now, this is the same thing that it, that happens when we put our money in the bank. We may not be earning a huge amount of interest on our money sitting in the bank, but the banks are earning gobs and gobs. Can I say gobs? You can goobs? say gobs. Is it goobs or gobs? Gobs. <laughs> it's gobs and gobs of It's interest. a hell of a lot of money, okay? Yes. A, lot of, a lot of money on the interest because they're able to keep the money in motion. And if you want to learn how to earn a hell of a lot of money just like the banks, then click on the link below to join the nation. And let us know in the comments, where else are you earning compound interest? When we think about interest, interest is a result of money in motion because let's think about it. Whenever you invest your money, that money is out being used. It's out being leveraged. Mm -hmm. Whenever we invest in the stock market, that money isn't sitting there in the stock market. It's out being used. Yep. Whenever we put our money in a CD mm -hmm. or even our savings account, we earn a small amount of interest, but that money is out being used. That's how we're able to earn interest. Mm -hmm. Now, with that said, when it comes to utilizing whole life insurance, getting a loan from the bank and then maybe allocating those funds for something we would have spent anyway, we're able to earn interest. We are able to put that money to work. Now, really quickly, before we even jump into that information, mm -hmm. just think about it. We need to put this into perspective. I feel like that's the main thing that we're missing here is how many of you own a home? How many of you own a car? How many of you have credit cards? How many of you student loans? Ooh, that's a good one. Medical bills, whatever it is you are paying interest from your mortgage, your car, your credit cards, student loans, and some medical bills in some cases, you know, personal loans, whatever the case may be. All of that money is in motion. Is in motion. By us. Yeah. We're paying it every single month. I'm paying it. He's paying it. You're paying it. The guy behind you paying it. The one next to you paying it. Everybody's paying interest. So that's what we're talking about is stacking interest rates because right now in your household, you probably have four or five different vehicles in which you are paying interest on. Mm -hmm. I think it's like the average household is paying interest on three items and that's typically your house, uh, a car and a credit card. So think about that. That's interest. That's just stacking, stacking, stacking. Now when all of us every single month are paying our our bills, that money is going to accumulate in the bank. And do you think that that money is just going to sit in the bank? Mm -hmm. No, they're going to continue to lend that money out to everyone else who needs loans and houses and cars because they're stacking interest rates. Yeah. And the cool thing about it, the well, cool thing for the banks is the fact that these large banks, we're only using about 10 of them. Yeah. Most people utilize about what well, all of us collectively, the major banks are about 10, 15 of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And 
the banks are able to leverage all of the interests, all of the money that we're spending, all of our cash flow that is coming to them, all of our direct deposits, they're able to utilize those to keep money in motion for us. Mm -hmm. So yeah, because our, like Terry said, our direct deposits are unsecured loans. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you knew that, but every time we put money in the bank, it's out. (laughs) <laughs> because they're leveraging it, flipping money, stacking interest rates. So we, we want to hammer home on that to make sure that you understand because this whole video is talking about compound interest and how you can earn compound interest just like the banks. You got to understand first and foremost how they're doing it in the first place. They're keeping it in motion. Mm-hmm. And the best asset that the banks have is us. Yes. So why not be an <laughs> asset for ourselves and keep our own funds in motion because mm-hmm. we're out there earning income, we have cash flow. So why don't we utilize that cash flow, get a loan from ourselves and pay ourselves that interest. Mm-hmm. And then instead of getting another loan from the bank or waiting before that loan is paid back, yeah. we can reallocate those funds for something else. That's mm-hmm. how you stack interest rates on top of each other. Mm-hmm. Now, I really liked what you said about uh, the we are the biggest asset for the bank uh, because our loans are our assets to the banks. Now, think about it. You know, the banks are always sending these nice pretty letters in the mail or giving you a call saying, hey, you qualify for so-and-so. Zero percent interest. <laughs> you get this, you get that. Everybody gets interest rates, you know. <laughs> Why do you think they're doing that? They're not doing it because, well, that they are being friendly. Customer service is huge, but the banks are a business at the end of the day. They have to make money. So they continue to offer their products and services to us so that we can continue to pay interest. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Go figure. (laughs) And one thing that we talked about the other day was, you know, you never hear the banks uh, or advertisements talking about savings accounts. No, the advertisements are for credit cards mainly because that's how they're, they are making a killing in the interest payments that are coming back to them. Yeah, they advertise the things that have the highest interest rates. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which you, is smart. You can't blame them. That's marketing. It, it's a business. You got to yeah. do what you got to do. So if anything, again, it's all about making sure that you understand how this works. Now, let's loop it all home, shall we? Because we talked about how the banks are stacking interest rates. We mentioned this thing called whole life insurance. So when we talk about whole life insurance is the leverage that we talked about. If we have $20,000 worth of cash, we are going to leverage that to get a loan from the insurance company instead of going to the bank and getting some funds because we are leveraging something called a banking process where we are becoming our own bank. We are utilizing our whole life insurance policy to be its own personal line of credit for ourselves. So anytime we need money, we're going to leverage it from our policy and we're going to pay ourselves back the principal and interest that we would have paid to the bank. Right. So when we think about the fact that we don't have control control over the growth, Mm -hmm. we don't have control over the growth when we utilize a traditional uh, investment vehicle like a stock market. Because Mm -hmm. when you put your money there, you're able to earn interest on one thing Mm -hmm. or your portfolio Mm -hmm. or whatever you guys want to comment in the now now one thing when you talk about the stock market we didn't talk about the volatility of it you know you really have to understand what you're, what you're doing within the stock market because you could put money up and then you could lose it so there goes the compound interest effect because you are at risk yeah so one thing that is to be clear with uh, a whole life insurance is it provides a guarantee yeah it, the life insurance policy provides a guarantee but the biggest risk when you get a loan is you amen you have to you have to pay yourself back. You yes. have to pay yourself back with interest because when you borrow money from the bank, you pay them back with interest. We have to respect our money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like we said, if we leverage the cash from the policy, the discipline comes into play where we actually need to pay ourselves back. We're not just willy-nilly going to get this loan and spend it. So again, we need to be just as diligent with our funds as we would with the bank. Because again, if you don't pay the bank, they're going to come pick up whatever (laughs) that they gave you in the first place, Mm -hmm. um, be it your car or your house. So we need to treat ourselves the exact same way when it comes to this whole compounding and stacking interest rates. Now, uh, the other thing that we haven't mentioned yet is stacking interest rates within our own banking system. You know, once we get one loan, it doesn't just stop there. We're going to continue to lend ourselves money because we would have got loans from credit card, so to speak, Mm -hmm. right? A personal loan or, or whatever it is to leverage cash. So we are just going to continue to get loans from our policies and keep money in motion so that we can stack the interest rates just like the banks would. Yeah. Now we're making this sound very, very easy and it's not complicated, but if you don't have discipline, if you don't have the 
proper uh, money management habits. Mm -hmm. If you don't have cash flow, you can't create money without having money in the first place. So true. And what you have to really take into consideration is your documentation. Mm -hmm. When we talk about stacking interest rates, we're talking about actually utilizing the banks as a blueprint. We keep talking about the banks, but they have the perfect blueprint. Yeah. How many of us are able to go to a bank and they just give us money mm. without us filling out any paperwork or without us knowing on a monthly basis how we're going to pay that money back? Yeah, they We have down. to do the exact same thing. <laughs> we have to be diligent, even more diligent when we start creating our own banking system mm -hmm. than we are right now. Mm -hmm. So we really, really have to be responsible and take this thing seriously because the potential is out of this world. It can be. And and what Darius and I are talking about too is when you think about loans and you know leveraging money, typically think people are thinking, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars. And when we started our banking system, it was, you know, we were just starting on our own scale, what mm -hmm. we had available. So it's important to understand that, you know, right now you could be paying maybe a hundred dollars in interest on a credit card or whatever it is, but multiply that times twelve months, multiply that times two years, and that's just one credit card. How many credit cards? Cards do you own in your possession? That money adds up very quickly. And that's a lot of money that we could utilize to make some really big damage or, or headway within our own financial goals. Yeah, because again, the compound interest is about how you finish. Yes. It's not about how you start. Uh -huh. You're able to accumulate the most money in the end. So mm -hmm. the longer we wait, the less money we are um, going to be able to earn in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so if anything, we just want to make sure that we're able to share this information with you because once we learned that we could earn compound interest, just like the banks and stack our own interest rates and then create our own banking system on top of that, we were like, mind blown. So it should be very, very easy for you all to catch on like we did and use something called whole life insurance, this amazing product that not only provides us the saving capabilities with a guarantee of compound interest, but a death benefit at the same time. There you go. So it's really, 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 really awesome once you start to understand the financial products that are at your fingertips and how to utilize them to your benefits. Because when we think about whole life and or when we think about life insurance in general, it's typically just I gotta die and then my family is gonna get the money. But really, there's so many amazing things that you can do with life insurance. You just have to educate yourself. And that's what the Wealth Nation channel is all about. <laughs> We thought compound interest. Nah, nah. <laughs> you, you say the freebie that <laughs> it's been so long. Um, can you do that again? Because I didn't <laughs> <laughs> remember you to say the freebie. So go ahead and click on our next video. <laughs> <laughs> And make sure you check out our next video where we talk about how compound interest is failing you. And also remember to click on the freebie so that you can get 52 ways on how you can stack interest in your favor. And remember to own your own lifestyle. Or someone else will.